Our chair is Aruma Otish, Director General of the Security and Exchange Commission for uh, Nigeria. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me join others in um, welcoming you and saying also how really delighted I am uh, to be chairing uh, the first panel uh, today. Um, you all have your packs, um, so I won't take our time uh, because I have a very distinguished panel uh, of introducing uh, each of the panelists. Uh, I'd like to just say a few words about why this topic is so essential at this time. Uh, I think as Africa becomes the opportunity for everyone in the world, the public markets are usually, uh, in a sense, the first port of call for anyone who's looking to invest uh, in Africa. So I'm really delighted that the Africa Investor has put together this distinguished panel of experienced heads of exchanges uh, and also uh, someone I call the Ambassador of Africa for Businessmen, uh, Jay Island, to give you a real perspective. Let me start with a regulator's perspective because I believe I'm the only one uh, on the panel uh, who's a regulator. I'm really pleased to be standing here to say that over the last few years, you've seen each market in Africa focus much more on creating a strong regulatory environment that is supportive of the investor, whether domestic or international. And that's because many of us are members of the International Organization of Securities Commission, which is a global body that basically sets the standards for all capital markets around the world. We are fortunate at SEC to sit on the board, along with South Africa and Morocco, where we decide what those standards are. But one of the key objectives of that standard is really to protect the investor, whether domestic or international. For us in Nigeria, creating that supportive, strong regulatory environment is very critical. Uh, we feel that it's important to make sure that we, have, we use global best practice, we have the best systems, but also that our enforcement is tough so that people know that if you do the wrong thing, you'll be brought to book. Many of you have followed some of the examples of the actions that we've taken as SEC Nigeria. I'm also very proud of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which, uh, as you know, over the last four years has undergone reform. One of the things that excites me is the trading platform for the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the XGen, which basically is a kind of platform that you would have anywhere in the world and basically positions us as a gateway into Africa. I want to also say that we have a central depository that is first class, that is rated by Thomson's ratings, and that is adequately regulated. Because of that, over the last few years, you've seen foreign investor participation in the Nigerian stock market go up to 70% versus 30% for domestic investors. Right now, we're at 50-50 domestic and foreign investors. And, it's, and foreign investments is predominantly institutional investments. Uh, we are, um, I think, 18% of the Morgan Stanley uh, Index for Frontier Markets has 18% of that uh, index coming uh, from Nigerian uh, blue chip companies. I want to end uh, these few remarks by saying that we recognize that some of our markets are quite small. So within West Africa, we're also very delighted about the success that we've had with integration. Uh, and this is an initiative that's been led by each of the regulators, each of the exchanges uh, in West Africa to ensure that when you position yourself to enter any of those markets, essentially you're able to cover the West African market. I wanted to say a few words about this just to set the tone and to say that indeed uh, we are open for business. Uh, some people are enjoying the gains of uh, being a first mover uh, and I'm sure that the panel will probably speak a bit more about some of the issues that I've raised. I want to thank you.
thank you, panelists. As I indicated, uh, we'll must, we must kick to time. Uh, and I think I'll just go from one uh, person uh, to the other. Uh, Mr. Eko Afedizie, you're the Deputy Managing Director of the Ghanaian Stock Exchange. Uh, I'd like you to help us understand the capital market environment in Ghana in this respect and what opportunities you see for institutional investors. I'd like you to share a few examples on how the current Ghana transactions are being de-risked. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I bring you greetings from Ghana and also uh, Ghana Stock Exchange. Um, you must all be aware that Ghana is one of the preferred uh, investment destinations in Sub-Saharan Africa. There's no doubt about that. And that also reflects um, in the, the things that we do at the Stock Exchange. Uh, like uh, the Chair said, uh, most of our markets are very young. Uh, and also uh, still growing. Uh, Ghana Stock Exchange is just about 24 years old. It's a fledging market, uh, but it's been growing at a very fast uh, space. Uh, we've had investors making very good returns on this market over the years. Um, we do abide by all the international best practices that you can think about when it comes to stock uh, markets. Um, we have all our procedures electronic systems, uh, electronic, seamless uh, from trading all the way to clearance settlement to depository. So there's no manual intervention uh, when it comes to the procedures and practices at the exchange. Um, let me say that the market is open to non-resident, uh, uh, non-residents, non including foreigners and non-resident Ghanaians generally. Uh, there are no restrictions as to um, the kind of investments that you can have and also uh, your holdings on the market. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the market uh, behaves like any normal market that you find uh, anywhere. In 2014, 2013, was one of the best years um, uh, when it comes to the uh, stock exchange in Ghana. We had a composite index going up by 78%, about 55% in dollar terms, uh, one of the best uh, in Africa, about second best um, as claimed. We also had uh, the highest value of shares traded ever on our market in our history of 24 years. The performance was largely driven by the performance of the listed companies, and there are about three CEOs of listed companies in Ghana here who can share with you how come they were able to drive the market the way they did last year. Then also the pension fund uh, reforms taking place in Ghana is also creating some demand uh, for shares. So the only challenge we have is how to increase the supply side on the market. We also did um, merge our two depositories in Ghana so that we'll have just one depository and make it a one-stop uh, shop for both equities and government uh, securities. So that's what we did in Ghana in 2013. Then the interesting thing we did also was to create a unique, innovative Ghana alternative market to serve the small, medium-sized companies as well as uh, new uh, companies uh, coming up. So that's what happened in 2013. 2014 is quite a challenging year. Uh, we've all heard about the macroeconomic environment in Ghana, uh, where we've had uh, foreign currency uh, issues, uh, and that is also um, being addressed uh, uh, quite seriously by the government. So we've had stability in that direction as we speak. But in trying to de-risk de -risk investments in Ghana, there are many things that we've done. One, the government itself is promoting investments in Ghana, so we have various rules various rules and regulations that make it easier for investors to invest in Ghana, for instance. Foreign exchange rules do allow uh, full remittability of uh, interest, dividends, and capital, and that is very key for foreign investors. Then also, when it comes to the regulator side, we do have regulations uh, to protect the investor. The Securities and Regulatory Commission abides by all the IOSCO uh, principles. Then when it comes to the stock exchange itself, our clear and settlement rules do make sure that uh, there's hardly any failures in the system. Uh, we do have uh, exposure limits for brokers when they're trading. We do pre-validation uh, so they cannot sell what you don't have. Uh, we also have systems uh, that have been put in place to make sure that um, the downturn, uh, the uptime is almost 100%, 99.9%. .9, uh, so on the whole, we've tried as much as possible 
to make it quite easy for investors generally, whether domestic or foreign, to invest on our market with very minimal uh, risk. So let me pause here by saying that it's still a good investment destination uh, when it comes to Ghana, and I uh, urge the institutional investors here uh, to try and, um, 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 and invest in Ghana, especially on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that perspective. I'd like to hand over to Mr. Edo Kofi Amenove, the Chief Executive Officer and the Director General of the Boost uh, Regional Valor um, of, um, uh, based in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, tell us about the BRVM, its plans, and some of the successful ca cases of transactions being de-risked. How is this being done? and who are the key players. Thank you, Mrs. Chair. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think that uh, it is important to, to see uh, our African capital markets as a part of the world global capital market. And as the chair said, our market are built according to uh, international standards, uh, our market regulators are members of the IOSCO, uh, as the SEC here, and as uh, IMF in France and, and in Canada. Uh, we have international custodians that are operating in our market, like Societe Generale, Citibank, and uh, we, we have a separation between the stock exchanges and, and the depositories. And I think that all our transactions are also done according to the best practice in the world. Especially on the BRVM, uh, our market is a fully integrated electronic market, the, the, the only one in the world uh, which is common to many countries. Uh, and our market is common to the eight African countries in, in West Africa. The BRVM uh, has some particularities. First, you can access our market from any of the eight countries using a broker based in Abidjan, in Senegal, in Togo, or, or, or in Niger. Uh, as our stockbrokers uh, have a common passport to uh, operate in the, the unique uh, space of the, of the market. Uh, one particularity is also that the CFA, our money is pegged to the euro, so there is no uh, exchange risk uh, when you come in our market. And finally, uh, there is no restriction on capital flow uh, in the WAMU for portfolio investment. Actually, we have many uh, international investors that invest in the BRVM as 50% uh, of our assets are held by these uh, international investors. And the BRVM has also good performance during the last three years as many of the uh, African capital markets. Actually, the market capitalization is about 12 billion US dollars and we have uh, 37 listed company and 35 bond listed in our market. This year, we integrate the MSCI and S&P indexes for African countries. I think that is important to mention that also, the WAMU is a favorable investment uh, union for uh, global investors as the GDP of our countries uh, growth of uh, about 6% uh, the last years, and the uh, inflation is very low in our, in our countries. Our government undertake also many reforms to mitigate risk in our countries. And uh, I think that uh, actually uh, we can invite many of you uh, international investors to, to come in the WAMU and, and invest because we, we have uh, an environment that is favorable to investment. And I hope that uh, with the integration with Ghana and, uh, and, and Nigeria, we'll give you a, 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 a more large platform to, to, to invest. We are expecting for this year two IPO, uh, so we can have two new listed companies in the market, and for uh, next year, about three, three companies listed. Thank you.
my panelists are also keeping uh, to time, uh, so they're also very disciplined. Um, I think I'll um, take a break from the heads of exchanges and go to uh, Jay Island, uh, the president of GE Africa, because uh, I think it's important to also get the perspective uh, of um, someone who's present in many of these countries. Um, Jay, please share uh, GE's perspective on Africa's investment climate, what opportunities there are, uh, particularly for institutional investors, uh, and also to partner with GE, given that you're across Africa. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as the chairman said, my name is Jay Ireland. I run GE Africa. I'm located in Nairobi, Kenya, and I've been there for the last three and a half years. Um, we all know about the Africa demographic growth, uh, population, middle class growth, uh, all of the stronger economies, et cetera. But the key thing for all of that to continue is going to be a focus on a few different things. One of the main ones is going to be improving the infrastructure that is uh, needed in the, across the continent. And as you look at that, there's probably anywhere from 50 to $90 billion a year right now that is going to be needed for Africa infrastructure investment. And that is going to be across a number of different, uh, whether it's transportation, uh, power, uh, aviation, healthcare, uh, oil and gas equipment, et cetera. There's a ton of uh, opportunities from the standpoint of financing projects. And I think the key thing around that is a combination of the improvement of the economies, but also much more private sector involvement from the standpoint of uh, what we're seeing in Nigeria with the with the uh, privatization of the power sector. And I think that gives a lot more potential for investment, and more importantly, a lot more potential for continued investment and continued improvement in, in performance because of the stringent requirements that financial investors will put on the operators, which is, ne which is necessary around maintenance, et cetera. So I think there's a couple of different ways to invest as you think about it. One is from the standpoint of project finance, Another one is a standpoint of uh, having vehicles that are available for private sector to use. And I'll give you a couple of examples that we have and that what we're working on. One is uh, we have a $350 million uh, facility with Standard Bank uh, to invest in distributed power. We've got a $10 million facility with Kenya Commercial Bank for Kenya uh, around our health care. Uh, business and uh, around x-rays and diagnostic imaging tools. We're starting up supplier development funds where we're going to seed capital to supply chain and continue to build it out and we will use our offtake as the ability to finance. And so when you see a few of those different capabilities, it gives the investment community different ways to invest to, to really look at Africa and partner with some of the private sector. We're also looking at developing more potential around that, where we would have a, a, uh, a box, if you will, of, of requirements from investors of what, what they're looking for from projects. I think that's very important from your perspective to make sure the risks are, are perceived appropriately, and more importantly, the risks are managed. I think another key thing that the stock exchanges bring is to increase the depth of the capital markets. One of the uh, great untapped potentials in Africa is the entrepreneurial small medium enterprise uh, businesses that are out there. And I think from that perspective, there's a ton of opportunity and we need to get more capital capability to those, to those um, companies to, as they continue to grow in the economies. So I view the African uh, economy from our perspective as, as dynamic, uh, very growth oriented, We've had tremendous success. We look forward to working with any of you on projects and on continuing to invest in the growth area of the world right now, which is Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we've taken you from West Africa to East Africa, uh, and I think we can take you to South Af Southern Africa. Uh, right now. Uh, I'd like to introduce um, Sunil Benimadu, uh, the CEO of the Mauritius Stock Exchange. Uh, he's also the chairman of the Africa Securities Exchanges Association. Sunil, yes. uh, please can you tell us 
about the multi-currency listing, trading, and settlement platform uh, that your exchange set up and how this platform uh, is helping to de-risk transactions effective <coughs> on your market, particularly by foreign investors. Um, also, uh, can you spend some time uh, on uh, some of the Africa and integration projects uh, that are going <coughs> on right now? Thank you, uh, Arunma. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm indeed pleased to be here. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, to understand the reason why the Stock Exchange of Mauritius came up with the idea of setting up a multi-currency listing, trading, and settlement platform, I think we need to link it to the, the internationalization strategy of the Stock Exchange of Mauritius. In fact, since 2010, we've decided to move away from what has historically been an equity-centric domestic exchange, catering essentially for the capital needs of the local issuers to a multi-asset class internationalized exchange. And to achieve that uh, new strategy, of course, there were a number of new things that we uh, needed to implement. And among one of those uh, new initiatives that we've uh, implemented is the setting up of a multi-currency listing, trading, and settlement platform. So basically what this means is that today uh, the Stock Exchange of Mauritius is in a position to help an issuer uh, raise capital, list, trade, and settle the underlying transactions in any of the uh, four international currencies, uh, the US dollar, the uh, British pound, the euro, uh, the South African ren, and then of course there's the Mauritian rupee. And the reason why we've done that is because we've seen that Mauritius is growingly being used as a platform for investments into Africa, into India, and into other emerging regions of the world because Mauritius has a number of favorable double taxation treaties. It has also signed a number of investment protection and promotion agreements with, on a bilateral basis with a number of countries. So we wanted to leverage that potential because today in Mauritius there are uh, hundreds of international funds that are located with billions of dollars of, of potential investments. Uh, there are uh, hundreds of global business companies that have been set up in Mauritius and that are leveraging off the platform of Mauritius to invest in India, Africa, and other countries. And many of these global business companies need capital to, to fund their activities. So we felt that if we could leverage off this big presence in Mauritius and offer the potential issuers the possibility to raise capital, uh, trade and settle in international currencies, it will make their life easier and it will help those international investors that are looking to invest into those companies to reduce their risk. Why? Because when you invest in dollar, you trade, you list, trade and settle in dollar or in euro or in the British pound, basically as a foreign investor you don't need to convert your dollar into the local currency for investments and then when you sell you, you, you get the local currency and, and, and reconvert it back. So there are lots of <coughs> costs associated with that. So that's why we came with this uh, multi-currency international platform and it's been working very well because since 2010 we've listed 60 new uh, issuers and products on our exchange, be it in the, name, in the form of global funds, etc., And we've helped uh, many of these uh, institutions or issuers to raise capital. In fact, since 2010, there's been about nearly two billion, $1.9 billion that have been raised by these institutions. So it's a way to international the platform, but also de-risk the investments undertaken by foreign investors on our market. So I don't think I have time to answer the second question about integration. Maybe we'll take it later. No, I think we'll, we'll have a chance um, when we hear from uh, the audience uh, to also um, discuss uh, the issue of integration, uh, probably in our closing. Um, I have a question for you, though. Is there a direct flight from Mauritius to um, Casablanca? <laughs> no, not, not yet. yet like to, okay. but we're working on um, that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that maybe from um, Johannesburg or um, Kenya or Nairobi, yes. um, 
because I want to take you uh, to Morocco. Um, so you'll probably stop over in Nairobi or, or in Joburg on your way. Uh, as I introduce Karim uh, Haji, uh, who is the CEO of the Casablanca uh, Stock Exchange. Uh, Karim, uh, can you tell us about the Casablanca Stock Exchange, uh, its plans, and some of the successful transactions uh, that have been de-risked? Um, how have they been done, uh, and who have been those who have been involved in those transactions? Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. I am delighted to be here this morning. Uh, Casablanca Stock Exchange is one of the oldest on the continent since we were established in 1929. Not the best year to start an exchange, <laughs> I concede. But, well, we did quite well, uh, despite being set up in 1929. Uh, in 1993, we underwent a major reform with the capital markets reform, which uh, established Casablanca Stock Exchange as a mutualized exchange owned by, uh, by the brokers. Uh, in terms of uh, de-risking transactions, we are a totally a compliant exchange with international standards as we, we have uh, T plus three, uh, deliver, delivery versus payment. We have a central depository, which is responsible for delivering the securities uh, against the payment. We have also uh, RTGS, real-time gross settlement system, which is managed by the uh, central bank which also co contributes to uh, the security of transactions. Now, uh, in terms of uh, listed companies, we have today about 74 different listed companies in all major sectors of the economy for a total market cap of uh, roughly 55 billion US dollars, which positions us as one of the four largest exchanges in, uh, in Africa. And there is uh, also a financial center which has been set up uh, four years ago. Uh, it was a decision from His Majesty the King to set up a financial hub uh, which would be uh, uh, catering to investors and issuers, uh, not only in North Africa, but also, uh, why not, in uh, other parts of Africa, maybe Central and, uh, and West Africa. We, we have actually a working uh, agreement with uh, my friend uh, Felix from uh, BRVM, uh, trying to, uh, uh, to work together listing companies uh, on, the, uh, on, on both exchanges. So uh, this is, uh, today we have one Tunisian company which is listed on, on the exchange. We have only one foreign company listed so far, but we're looking at uh, having more uh, uh, foreign listings in, in the country. You have 30 more seconds. Okay. <laughs> I have such okay. a discipline, yes. but I like send them I'm in there, so there's to, one yeah. minute left and they just decide they'll stop. Uh, in, in terms of uh, capital uh, flows to the country, there is absolutely no restriction on capital flows in and out of Morocco, uh, the capital as well as dividend payments and, uh, and uh, interest payments. Uh, I also wanted to mention a very important step which was uh, taken recently. The Africa Development Bank set up the Africa 50 Fund in Casablanca, uh, which is an infrastructure fund. As Jay mentioned, infrastructure is a real uh, high growth area for the, for the continent as we, we have great needs uh, both in energy, transportation, uh, sanitation, all kinds of infrastructure. So the African Development Bank established uh, a $50 billion uh, fund in, in Morocco, uh, which will finance through PPP uh, projects throughout the continent. Uh, I think this is really uh, something which is going to help the development of infrastructure on the continent because that's really what's uh, preventing growth from being at an uh, even higher rate. We could envision a 7% average growth rate for the continent if infrastructure was up to standard. And today we're around 5% because it's not easy to transport goods, to ship goods from one country to another. 
that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the panel's been disciplined, and it's given you um, a rich perspective. I'm sure that they also had much more to say, uh, but in the spirit of keeping uh, it brief, since we'll have one-on-ones uh, later, um, uh, they've been very coincise. So I'd like, because I was very keen that we have uh, some comments and some questions uh, from uh, participants. Uh, I'm told that we now have only five minutes, uh, including... Uh, for closing. Um, so I'd like uh, anyone who wants to ask a question or make a comment to ask just one or make just one comment and to be very concise. Uh, but introduce yourself quickly. Yes, madam. There's, there's um, someone in the back, number two. And who's the third person? Because that's the last one, number three. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Donna Sims Wilson and I'm the new president of Smith Graham and Company. It's a six billion dollar uh, asset management firm in the United States. One of the issues with investing on African stock exchanges is liquidity. And so could every single stock exchange please comment on the steps that you're taking to improve liquidity? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. Um, those are, yes, thank you. Hi, Ashley Bendel, African Alliance, Pan-African Investment Bank across 12 African countries. Um, could you talk about the integration of stock exchanges across Africa? I'm confused by news around it on an ongoing basis. I would love some clarity on that, both Pan-Africa and within the region. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Benga Ogunjimi. I'm uh, with LDI Africa. Um, we run... Um, a recruiting program that connects young professionals around the world to opportunities to serve and work on the continent. I was wondering if you can all talk about your strategy to human capital investments um, on the continent and also the um, issue of talent and workforce development um, with the businesses that you, that you fund. What is your strategy around human capital development on the continent? Uh, thank you. I have the hard job of distributing the questions, uh, given the short time that we have. Uh, Mr. J. Uh, Island, uh, I'd like you to tackle the, th the last question about human capital, given that you uh, work across uh, okay. the uh, continent. Thank you. Um, I think it's imperative for any company to continue to invest in human capital. We, and, and I think from a multinational perspective, coming in to sell... Uh, you need to have a holistic approach. Uh, we, we have done a number of different things, one, inter one with our internal employees, which is we have every leadership program that we have in the United States, we have in Africa. Uh, we've, we've put 200 um, you know, young professionals uh, currently through that program uh, with a continued focus on it. But more importantly, we need to build out the supply chain capability as well as other companies, and we're, we're investing in curriculum development in several African universities, mostly around technical capabilities, engineering, et cetera. Uh, we're sponsoring internships, scholarships, anything to continue to introduce Africans to the workplace and understand uh, what the potentials are by, uh, from that standpoint. So we feel that this is one of the most important things that anybody can do. We have a learning advisory board, which is made up of a number of different African uh, university presidents and again, with a focus on developing a core curricula that really is used from a standpoint of uh, employability. And then, of course, you have to have the jobs available, which we do, as do many other countries or companies in countries. So it's an absolute critical, critical aspect. Thank you. Uh, I'd like um, uh, Mr. Amenovi and uh, Mr. Karim Haji to comment about uh, the question on what you're doing about liquidity. Thank you very much. Um, uh, in the BRVM, uh, what we are doing is to increase the float uh, and set up some rules uh, of diffusion of the, the capital in the market. Because we think that it's very important to 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 have uh, a, a, 
a big float on uh, every uh, company listed so uh, the investor can have more more stock to trade and we also working on um, research and uh, on promotion of many stock brokers in the market to be sure that we can have the, the choice uh, in the market to, for the international investors. Thank you. Karim Hajj. Well, you're ab absolutely right to point to liquidity as a major issue on our exchanges. Uh, in Casablanca, we have taken a uh, few steps to improve liquidity. Uh, first step is the regulation to allow securities borrowing and lending which now has, uh, has been enacted. Uh, it needs some fine tuning. We need to improve uh, still this uh, regulation to allow uh, multiple uh, security uh, lending and to make short selling easier because one of the issues is that uh, short selling doesn't work today. I mean, we don't have short selling. So securities lending and borrowing will allow short selling so that securities which today are in the portfolios of insurance companies and asset managers will be available for trading, which is uh, really key because uh, we are mostly an institutional market. More than 80% today of the uh, volumes are basically done by Moroccan or foreign institutional investors. So we need also to develop a uh, retail investors, exactly. So that's what we're doing with the Casablanca uh, school, of the stock exchange school. We have, uh, we train around 5,000 students, pupils every year in universities, in high schools, and also all kinds of uh, professionals. Okay. And we have also the uh, stock exchange championship. We, uh, we have uh, on internet, we developed a program to allow people to play the stock exchange and we give prizes to the best performers, so that also helps. Uh, we have one more question that we need to yeah. tackle. Okay. Uh, and I've got two um, panelists who will um, discuss it. Um, so Neil, um, the question about integration, uh, your perspective, uh, and then um, uh, Echo will also give a perspective because I think he's been uh, a champion of the West Africa Initiative. Okay, uh, <coughs> basically about uh, integration, uh, I think the, the question was about what kind, what kind of initiatives have been and undertaken. And we have one minute, 35 yes. Yes. seconds. I'll, I'll finish <laughs> before that. So I think the, the, the creation of a Pan-African exchange, in my view, uh, is, is still very premature. It's conceptually attractive, but I don't think it's going to happen because there's so many obstacles on the way, exchange control issues. Uh, the regulatory frameworks that differ and so on and so forth. What I think may happen is you'll see uh, integration within very specific regions. Maybe in West Africa, I know that Ghana, Nigeria, and, uh, and DRVM might be talking. I know in East Africa, uh, Nairobi, uh, Uganda, and Tanzania are, are looking at uh, you know, ways and means of integrating. And within the Southern African region, uh, what we're trying to do is use technology to cross-link the markets, that is, allow brokers from different exchanges to trade on each other, so that this allows the traffic to grow and increases, you know, the volume of transactions. So, so we have a pragmatic approach. Yes, integration. integration will, in my view, happen through technology and Echo. nothing else. Uh, in West Africa, uh, the key objective is to increase the size of the market and also improve liquidity. So what we are doing is, uh, one, we are creating access to all our markets uh, by brokers, so brokers in Nigeria who qualify, who meet certain requirements, can trade in the trade markets, then also issuers can also uh, assess capital in all the trade markets. We are doing that in three phases. The first phase is what we call the sponsored assets, and that has begun. Uh, then also the second phase is what we call KWAPs, uh, Qualified West African uh, Brokers, uh, who can trade across West Africa, and that will be in 2015. And in 2016, we'll have a virtual stock exchange where you can set anywhere in West Africa or any part of the world and assess the entire West African market, and that is what we are doing. Thank you very much. Uh, you've heard from uh, the panelists, global best practice, world-class exchanges, high returns uh, with ways to the risk, 
uh, GE's experience as testimony uh, to the opportunities that exist. Uh, you've heard what's happening with integration, uh, with also making uh, our markets customer friendly. Um, the goalposts kept changing in terms of time uh, as we were speaking. So I'll stop here and ask you to please join me to applaud the panel for being disciplined <laughs> and comprehensive. Thank you. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.